I've been asked to uh, to talk about my early life, and, and and I find that a little difficult for a couple of reasons, but um, I'm going to try to do it. Um, and the reasons are that I have already written uh, uh, a lot about it and uh, and tried to analyze my early life uh, for some reason. And the reason is that I am a student of Socrates and a few other people. And if you didn't know it, Socrates' main dictum that you'll find in many books about him is that uh, one should know oneself. He said the unexamined life is not worth living. And his know thyself comes from the gate at the temple to Apollo in the city of Delphi in Greece, which was the home of the oracle of Delphi and the god Apollo for more than 2,000 years. People used to go there. Anyway, as I say, I'm a peculiar person. I have studied everything that Socrates is supposed to have said and other people, and, and I have tried to understand myself. That's not an easy thing to do. And um, I have a little cartoon here. I showed it to one camera a moment ago. It's by Gahan Wilson. It's about 20 years old, and it shows some creature from another planet with a couple of eyes and a couple of arms. And he's begging on the street for some money, I think. And he has a little sign. It says, obviously, I'm on the wrong planet. And I have felt that way much of my life. And uh, it's probably because I do suffer I think that's the right word, a, a form of autism. Uh, I think it's called Asperger's syndrome. It really was only defined about 40 or 50 years ago. They still don't know that much about it, and they don't know that much about autism, but people are studying it. But um, I was a peculiar child, and I was born in the state of New Jersey, named after Jersey, which is an island, I think, off England or France. And um, there was the state of New York just across the river from where I was born. I was born in Newark, New Jersey. And it was 50 years after I was born there before I thought that Newark is New Ark. And it is. And it was named after New Ark, a Newark in England. Not that any of that matters. But I was born in 1949, about four years after the end of World War II. And uh, my parents had lived in Pennsylvania, a state nearby, and a, and a, a state famous for freedom. It's where the um, Constitution was written and the Declaration of Independence was written and it was founded by William Penn, some words of whom I have with me, but you probably won't hear them. I think William Penn was the governor of Pennsylvania. It was named after him. And I think he had a treaty with the native peoples that is the only treaty in America that was ever made and kept. All the others were broken. I'm carrying with me some words from various native peoples, and if I get a chance, I will read them. Anyway, I had a fairly good education. My father helped build Liberty ships in the port of Newark during the war, and my father was a worker. He worked five days a week, but he drank seven. He um, grew up during the Great Depression of the 1930s, and so did my mother. Um, the only way to sum that period up is one of the sayings I heard from him. And that was, we were so poor, we didn't have a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of. My mother was from another family, Pennsylvania Dutch, meaning German migrants, and they had been in America for several generations, so they didn't be Germans anymore. But they certainly lived differently than some other people. And um, as a young woman, she went to university. Anyway, during the war, sorry, just saw a black cat <laughs> in the car park. A little unusual, because I don't have one. Um, after the war, America was pretty much untouched by that war, but all over the world there were people and 
children especially who were suffering, migrants, people moving all over the world. And I was lucky enough to go to a fairly good school. It was a state school, but there were many people after that war who were determined to make a better world. The United Nations had been created. It was just across the river from us. And as a child, I was taken to the United Nations for a day to see it. And I actually worked for the United Nations, not that they ever knew it, but I worked for the United Nations when I was four, five, six, and seven years old because my mother um, tried to raise money for UNICEF, the United Nations Children's and Education Fund. So she would send me and my younger sister out to collect money for the United Nations Children's Fund, um, especially during Easter. Halloween and Christmas periods, I would go door to door and raise money for the United Nations. That wasn't my first job. My first job was shining shoes at the railway station nearby for five cents. And I worked throughout my childhood because my father drank most of our money or his money, and we lived in poverty. There were five children in the family. My mother worked five, so my mother had five children and worked three part-time jobs in order to feed and support them. So I grew up in a way that could be described as deprived. And if one wants to know um, what possibly caused my autism, there are people that have theories. I have one myself. Some of you may have heard of a fetal alcohol syndrome. They've studied it quite a lot now, and that is that if mothers are uh, subjected to a lot of alcohol while they're pregnant, often their children have a variety of symptoms of some damage. This was written about in the 1920s and 30s in a book called Brave New World, and I had to read it in high school, about a, a futuristic dystopia, a, a world people might live in where they actually put alcohol in with the fetuses to make lower class citizens, people who are stupid or ignorant or, and will never strive for anything. So the, that class of people would do the work in, in that future society. In my case, I think I might be suffering from drunken sperm syndrome. <laughs> my father was drunk probably 24 hours a day for probably 30 or 40 years. That is, he was under the influence. And maybe someday somebody will know what causes autism. What to do about autism, I'm not sure. Mine is somewhat high functioning. I had difficulties as a child. I have no memories before the age of five, and I have very few memories from five to 10. Um, I still have trouble tying my shoes. I have had trouble Hmm. What can I say? I was only diagnosed about 10 or 15 years ago in this country when I was having trouble with Centerlink. I do have a document here. I was going to show the cameras. It doesn't really matter. It was just a letter from Centerlink in which I was taken off my disability pension about 10 or 15 years ago because they had determined that I had earned in the previous year in excess of $377 million on in interest on my investments. That is, last year I'd earned that much money on my investments. Now, of course, that was an error, and uh, I have no, in no such investments. Uh, they had taken my wife's bank account number and put it in the wrong space in the computer under our income. But nonetheless, they knocked me off a disability pension. And people, I showed the letter to, I made 10 copies, and I said to people, if this is true, you get a million dollars next week. But anyway, they said, no, you should go and tell them they're wrong. But uh, I didn't go for a while to tell them they were wrong. They don't really appreciate it. It doesn't really matter. I am, I am now a dis legally disabled person, which means I get a pension, and my life has improved considerably, and I would say, God bless the government. Um, but anyway, I went to a pretty good school. Many autistic people never learn to speak. Many of them just make sounds most of the rest of their lives and have to be cared for. Some of them bash their heads against walls. A lot of them need special care their entire life. I didn't get any special care apart from a mother who believed very deeply in God and God's love. And um, the rest of the care was whatever I could give myself. But um, I did have an interest in some things in life, like some little children who you will run into 
and many of them are autistic, who want to tell you all about the different dinosaurs they've been reading about, and they'll rattle off all the facts and figures. 